for this evening, we are going to discuss um, culture as a roadmap uh, for optimal human functioning. So, nabanggit ko na doon sa ating, um, sa ating study guide, no, napagpapatuloy pa rin ito nung mga common themes or questions natin in class no, na may kinalaman sa ano ba yung function or role ng culture sa buhay ng mga taon. So, alam natin that it has this adaptive function. At yung isang argument nga ay culture through the knowledge systems no, create this roadmap for us on how to live. No? Um, so that, that's that's part of it. Pangalawa, bahagi pa rin ng ating challenge. No? Yung ating main, the big challenge in this class, I think, has always been how do we engage culture in our research or, or in our work? So, so dito sa readings natin, hopefully nakita natin how we can potentially engage with culture um, sa usapin ng well-being and mental health, which I think is very important. So for tonight, let's focus on three goals. We'll briefly describe, describe the cultural model of optimal human functioning. And by optimal human functioning, yung, yung definition dyan nila Miyamoto, I high well-being, also high uh, perceptions of health, or actually even objective sense of health, uh, that you're both happy and healthy. Um, and then let's delve into exploring personal and indigenous meanings of health and well-being that, in theory, you know, at least what, based on the model, um, they posit that it should be derived from your eco-social context. You know? And then we'll end with the idea of cultural mismatch. You know? So um, um, the general framework dito para sa akin, parang, um, if, if I'm going to try to simplify what the chapter is saying, um, sila Miyamoto, they, they wanted to look into why people are different. You know, what, what is it about us meaning systems that uh, shape differences in conceptualizations of well-being and health? No? Uh, and then, dun sa cultural match or cultural mismatch, they talk about how to reach you know, optimal functioning or why it's very adaptive for our own well-being to kind of follow some of the culturally prescribed ways of being. Okay? Okay, let's get to it. So put down natin very quickly in cultural model of optimal functioning. Um, so in first part, then the chapter in Miyamoto, they differentiated um, between at least two different uh, approaches. Uh, which is kind of different from the cultural model. Yung hedonic versus eudaimonic approach, no? kung sakaling familiar kayo with positive psychology, ito yung isa sa mga unang ituturo at i-introduce, no? yung pag-differentiate ng what does it mean to be happy. No? Um, and then there's usually the more hedonic approach, di ba? yung uh, pag-aaral ng how do we attain pleasure, no? how do we minimize pain. And then there's, more, uh, there's the more eudaimonic approach to well-being, which talks about striving for purpose, no? yung idea ng mga meaning in life, yan. medyo eudaimonic yung approach. Tapos, they also talked about the biomedical and then the biopsychosocial approach to health. So kung yung unang bullet ay yung usual approaches to well-being, yung second bullet naman, yung usual approaches to, to health. No? So, uh, and I guess to a certain extent, we can also use this for mental health. No? Uh, yung biomedical, naka-angkla sa biological processes. So yan yung mga anong brain parts, yung different from people who are healthy and not healthy. Uh, yung pag-identify ng genes, no? that kind of switch on or switch off. Um, that eventually lead to um, dysfunctional uh, adaptations. So basically, pag biomedical, uh, pag may sakit ka, there's something wrong inside your body. Okay? Pero yung biopsychosocial, which actually is something that a lot of psychologists, um, and I think hopefully doctors also prefer, ay, medical doctors, ay yung interactions between the biological, the psychological, and the social cultural. No? Um, yung isa sa mga interesting experiments na ginagawa nila dito ay sa mga rats. No? Meron silang na-identify na genes na parang meron tayong kapareho. Tapos tinignan nila yung kapag inabandon yung rat ng primary caregiver versus inalagaan siya. No? So nakita nila na parang may, may, may certain genes that kind of switch off when we grow up kapag we feel a sense of abandonment no? um, during childhood. At dahil doon, nag, nag, nag yun to some um, what they consider as like maladaptive forms of functioning. So ganyan yung nakita lang relation ng genes at saka ng environment. Okay. But what they wanted to focus on was this, okay? The cultural model of optimal functioning. Ayan. So does this model look familiar to you or does it remind you of um, an earlier cultural model that we, that we discussed in class or that you've read? Ang naalala ko naman dito, yung culture as change model nila, nila Marcos no? and Hamidan, we presented that in one of our chapters. Um, because they talk about the uh, big ideas, the merits of our eyes big ideas, and then they talk about the institutions, no? and then they talk about the individual. So it kind of looks kind of similar. Okay? So um, the interesting about a lot of our cultural models is that they're very complex in the sense that hindi linear yung, yung relations no, ng mga components of the model. They usually have a tendency to influence each other. Uh, meron silang parang uh, bi-directional relations. No? Um, and then parang yung relation nila pwedeng 
tumalon from one component pababa no dun sa downstream effect uh, or pwede rin na mas parang uh, sequential yung effect niya. So usually ganun. So kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, sobrang hirap i-test nitong mga cultural models kasi yung madalas nang nagagawa sa mga studies at least in the west, laging pa isang direction yung yung na-test pero yung pabalik, hindi pa nila masyadong nakukuha. Let's start from the top. So yung idea, kagaya ng sinasabi ng most of our cultural models ay cultural beliefs and values about optimal functioning are derived here. Kung mapapansin ninyo, parang ito naman yung common theme across our reading so far is that our ecosocial contexts, our history as a human species, kung gusto nyo i-trace sa, sa kauna-unahang panahon pa, um, yung, yung, yung ecosocial contexts natin, they provide particular problems of living that we need to address. No? At yung solutions natin to those problems of living, eventually they become habits, no? Um, and then they become formalized or institutionalized. No? Um, so, nagiging silang systems, cultural systems, sh sorry, shared meaning systems, no? um, na nag-respond nga dun sa ecological and historical factors. No? Tapos, um, yung mga belief systems na yan, kadalasan na organize sila, no? na accumulate sila at particular levels like institutions, uh, socialization agents, no? napapaulit-ulit sila through practice. No? They are um, reified through outputs or cultural products. No? The idea is that these social cultural processes no, shape individuals, but also itong mga process na to, sinishape din sila ng individuals. Okay? So pagdating sa baba, uh, the idea is, dahil knowledge systems nga yan, yung mga cultural beliefs and values about optimal functioning, um, you know, they become easily accessible. No? And because you continually practice it, you continually use it in your life, they become more automatic, no? and they become part of your behavioral, affective, cognitive repertoire. Okay? Um, and then eventually, you know, if they work, because again, it's a constant theme natin in this class. If these knowledge systems work as solutions to the problems posed by ecosocial contexts, um, kahit na they're good enough solutions, pa ulit ulit muna siya gagawin. We'll continue to maintain that, and we'll probably reinforce it somehow. No? So kapag bumab pag bumaba na siya dun sa individual level, no, it becomes sort of like a mental habit. Then it shapes your conceptualizations and the manifestations of optimal function. Yeah. So now let's move forward to the personal and indigenous meanings of optimal functioning. Ayan. So, yung suggestion nila Miyamoto dun sa article, so if you wanted to engage with culture sa usapin ng well-being uh, and health, it might be good to start with meanings. Okay, what do we mean when we say happiness? What do we mean when we say well-being? What do we mean when we say health? Okay, so ang suggestion nila, kung pagbabatayan itong framework na to, you start with the ideas at this level. Okay, that's probably... Um, manifested here or, or has become useful for the individual. So now, let's try to explore your own meanings of well-being. Okay? Um, nung, nung, well, nagsimula yung project nung 2000 um, or at least nung late 90s. My goodness, bahay na ba kayo, <laughs> bahay na ba kayo ng late 90s? Um, yan. So nagkaroon ng pag-aaral si Dr. CC from the department uh, about, you know, they wanted to measure the Filipino well-being. No? Um, and doon nga nila nakuha yung translation ng well-being sa magandang buhay. At more and more, no, at especially with the research that we've been doing lately, yung, yung, yung magandang buhay para sa akin, pag i-reframe natin siya, it, this is a life where you are able to pursue the domains in your life that you value. No? At dun sa pag-aaral nila, Dr. Sisip, meron sila na-identify na 11 life domains. So housing, employment, savings, social relationships, leisure, physical health, psychological or mental health, religion and spiritual life, information and knowledge, government performance, and political participation. So dun sa, dun sa isang research that, that we did also, we, we, we wanted to find out whether people are able to pursue what they find valuable or important. Because as it turns out, itong 11 domains na to, iba-iba yung valuation natin sa kanila. Merong mga life domains that are more important than the rest. No? So yung isang consistent na interesting sa akin na lagi ko na, na nababanggit sa klase na nakita nila Dr. Sisip sa pag-aaral ay ang baba ng value ng leisure sa buhay ng maraming mga tao. No? So it, parang we're just, um, or at least yung survey participants nila. No? Um, yan yung isa sa parang uh, we take for granted a lot of times. No? Interestingly, yung religion and spiritual life, yung, a lot of people say it's important. And a lot of people also say that they're able to achieve or pursue that. Siguro kasi yung pinakamadali um, na ma-achieve sa buhay. Um, and also consistent in a lot of studies, yung housing and quality of neighborhood as like a top priority. Very, very important for a lot of people um, to say that their life is good. No? So I'm, I'm just showing you this. Uh, para mapakita sa inyo yung more, kasi di ba ang sabi nila, sabi nila Miyamoto, we start with local conceptualizations of well-being. At ito yung isa sa mga models na ginagamit din namin recently, na kahit medyo luma na siya, um, na yung, yung pwede mong i-explore ano yung mga life domain sa buhay ng mga tao na importante, at tatanungin mo sila na abot ba nila or na-achieve ba nila. Kasi di ba, pag importante at na-achieve mo, then you'd probably say, yeah, I have a good life. Pero pag importante, pero hindi mo siya na-achieve, 
classic example, savings. Importante sa mga tao, pero mababa yung uh, report nila na, na na-achieve namin yan. Um, I guess that sort of tells you that maybe hindi pa sila, hindi pa maganda or maginhawa yung buhay nila. Sige. So now, let's just move into this framework. Um, I think what is very important about, about this um, the, the, this article, at least yung results niya, no, that it's an indigenous model of health, no? at na maaaring hindi natin mahiwalay yung pag-unawa ng mga tao or ng mga particular group sa health um, or, or lubusan lang natin silang maunawaan kung they are within the material and social contexts. Parang yung understanding ng health has to be holistic. No? Uh, and, I, I, and I do have a feeling na um, yung, concept, yung translation natin ng health, baka negation siya of something, like walang sakit. Uh, baka, yung, baka yung idea natin ng healthy ay wala akong sakit, uh, maganda yung pangangatawan ko, um, hindi ako, yung mental health yung medyo tricky eh, kasi you know, we, we might fall into yung mga different um, at terms of use, pero parang baka wala akong sakit sa utak, etc. No? Uh, I'm not sure. No? But, but what is interesting about this model is that it shows us that when we ask different groups of people, we can probably come up with as many conceptualizations of health. I think that's that's what we need to, um, to re, uh, what, what I hope we realize here, no? um, that there might be groups who would give you a more holistic sense of health. Uh, they talk about health in one, no? na physical, siya, mental, siya, social well-being. Baka wala akong kaaway. That also means um, they are in good health. No? Um, and, that, and, and that means, uh, ang isang consequence kasi, no? yung achieving health, and relatedly, yung achieving uh, maginhawang buhay, baka proseso siya na kailangan marami kang itatarget. No? Uh, alibawa, livelihood. For me, para, para sa akin, very powerful yun eh. Yung maraming mga ay tayo nagsasabi na baka hindi maganda yung kalusugan nila because they have to work. They're, they're tired all the time and they worry about um, you know, the next meal or the next day. No? Um, so, you know, to achieve health, parang yun yung message sa atin ng article ni, ni Estacio. You need to provide a stable livelihood. No? You need good social relations. And I, I don't think we, we, we talk about that a lot. No? Yung cleanliness and spiritual wellness um, na viewed as essential components ng good and decent way, decent way of living. Sa, basta, uh, we're doing this kasi yung isang suggestion ni, ni, nila Miyamoto ay we start with conceptualizations of mental health and well-being if you want a cultural approach. No? And this is these are some of the concrete studies that are related to that. Sige. Um, what I also wanted to emphasize na sa article nila ay, uh, di ba yung palagi natin sinasabi sa klase natin, we want to look beyond differences ng mga tao. So we need to understand what are the possible sources of the differences in the conceptualizations. At yung isang binabanggit nga nila, um, isang binabanggit nila, may amount doon sa article nila, kapag meron kang individual or interpersonal na, na view, uh, or in individual or independent or interdependent self-construal, posibleng iba rin yung idea mo ng what will give you uh, happiness in life. No? So for instance, um, although napagsapan na natin dun sa, dun sa article, kung naalala nyo pa yung article about uh, yung Kila Keller and partner, na parang nandun tayo sa gitna, no? na hindi siya tayo purely individualistic, purely interpersonal or interdependent, parang there's somewhere in between no? yung, yung karanasan ng marami sa atin. So um, just to concretize what they were saying, uh, dun, sa, dun sa study nga nila Dr. Sisip, Ang, ang interpretation nila dun sa data set nila, crucial para sa magandang buhay para sa maraming mga Pilipino ay yung stable horizontal, ano ba horizontal? Yan, yung pagkano uh, Horizontal, so stable relationships with family and friends, but also vertical relationships. No? Stable relationship with a supreme being. Kapag present yan, um, you know, people are considerably happy. And I think that sort of tells us what kind of worldview people are operating in. Um, and we see this a lot sa mga news, di ba? Kapag may sakuna na nangyari, tapos tatanungin ko, kumustahin ng reporter yung mga survivors of the disaster and then they'd say, um, so nawalan sila ng bahay, they probably don't know how to fend for themselves in the, in the coming days, but they would say, uh, okay naman po kami, kompleto yung pamilya, uh, walang nasaktan sa amin, so okay. Kahit na wala na silang bahay, no? kahit na magiging problemado sila about income and all that, um, it's that, you know, very interpersonal probably view of the world, you know, that sort of sets the agenda for them of what it means to be happy or live a good life. I, this is something I, I want you to also think about. Uh, this, this was lifted from the Miyamoto article. So, sabi niya, people in interdependent cultures, probably like Philippines, uh, in which the maintenance of social harmony is imperative, do tend to be more concerned about the interpersonal ramifications of their happiness than do people in independent cultures. Okay. Parang kailangan ninyong isipin yung welfare of your family or parang hindi pwedeng kayo lang yung masaya kailangan masaya din yung ibang mga tao sa buhay ninyo. Um, and yung isang potential explanation for that is maybe the way that our culture, uh, yung, 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 the way that relationships are valued in our context. So maybe that can explain um, why it's 
in in group happiness no or ano yung iisipin ng iba sasabihin ng iba no na nagdidikta no nung uh, kung ano yung importante para sa atin bukod doon sa individual and interpersonal views yung isang binanggit din nila Miyamoto na possible source ng uh, differences in conceptualizations ay yung dialectical versus non-dialectical views uh, and, and the idea behind dialectical thinking um, if you're just going to reiterate ito yung type of thinking na yung emphasis mo ay nagco-coexist yung contradiction so contradictions work for you. Na yung isang isang example nila na contradiction na Chinese proverb yung parang beware of your friend but not your enemy. Parang di ba yun yung contra- yun yung idea ng contradiction. Kaibigan mo siya pero parang kailangan mong mag-ingat sa kanya as opposed to you know your enemy. So let me just end with uh, the idea of cultural matching. Okay? So bakit importante yung usapin ng cultural matching para kay kil- Miyamoto? Kasi yung una nilang discussion, they talked about frameworks that may help explain why the idea of well-being and health of people are different. No? Yung idea naman nila ng cultural matching gives us an idea of how we can pursue a good life or how we can attain, ito how part, how we can attain um, optimal functioning. So, sabi nga nila, the match between individual psychological process and culturally prescribed tasks and goals lead to optimal functioning. So, ang ganda ng idea ng cultural match, di ba? So, um, parang ang message nito, at least for me, ay, alam ko ba yung shared meaning systems ng aking pamilya at ng aking immediate social context that include uh, that include um, what they value what are their belief systems no? and then do i act in accordance no with that belief system so kung may cultural matching then probably it's easier to lead an optimal uh, it, it, it's easier to live uh, the good life na may optimal function okay um so this is just really moving the conversation forward. No? Uh, when I was reading part of their chapter, I was reminded of, of uh, Dr. Enrique's Pakikipagkapatao theory because uh, to be able to understand the role of culture and op- op- optimal functioning, we can look into Pakikipagkapatao as a culturally prescribed task and goal. No? Diba kahalimbawa, para sa marami sa mga grupo na kinabibilangan natin, fitting into one's roles and fitting into other people's expectations is crucial such that if we don't fit into their roles, into the roles assigned to us, if we don't fit into the expectations, then it will cause trouble. No? Hindi magiging maganda yung buhay natin. Um, baka culturally prescribed task ninyo maintaining harmony, such that kapag, you know, you assert your autonomy at nag, uh, nag-create yan ng gulo sa pamilya mo, uh, baka, hindi, baka hindi, hindi ganap o lubos no? yung, ating, uh, yung ating ganda ng buhay or kaginhawa ang nararanasan. Um, so sabi nga ni Salzman, Culture provide rules and customs, uh, goals of conduct. No? By acting in accordance with those rules, norms, and customs, the individual who buys into the culture may construct a sense of significance and value. What is this slide trying to tell us? Uh, it's trying to tell us that baka kapag may cultural match, doon nakukuha ng mga tao yung sense of significance and value nila. Kung baga, hindi sila lumulutan. When you're part of a group, uh, when you're part of a group, then you realize, I need to know what are the rules and customs and goals of conduct. And if I act accordingly, then I feel like I'm part of the group. And then I feel like my life has significance and value. As opposed to feeling like, you know, you're going against the tide and that you're all alone and that it's hard to find some significance and value in that. So okay, it's important if we don't agree with the rules of the game of our immediate context, we need to find our tribe who will understand us, no? or naka ka match natin no, ng, ng rules and customs and goals. So dito natin makikita ano yung role ng culture, di ba? Um, kasi pag na, na-gets mo yung, yung rules at nasunod mo yung rules, then you you are rewarded for it by being a member of a group. Yung isang interesting na nabanggit din dun sa text ay whether well-being and health are related. No? At yung initial evidence seems to state that. No? Um, yung, indi- halbawa, yung individuals engaging in meaningful goal pursuit tend to be healthier. Meaning, if people have a sense of purpose and that sense of purpose is anchored on cultural matching, sometimes they tend to um, live healthier lives. No? Yung isa rin, ano yung meaning system sa mga tao? Baka yun yung importante na ma-identify para ma-encourage natin sila to engage in a healthy lifestyle or engage in healthy behaviors. So for instance, yung classic na binagit nila dun sa text, kapag medyo Western yung ideals, you give people options in a sense of autonomy or control, then that might predict healthy consumption. Pero for more... Asian countries like Japan, it might be the situational trigger that may predict healthy consumption. So, halimbawa, sa Philippines, uh, well, at least sa Quezon City, hindi ko alam kung naabutan nyo ever ito. Yung MMDA, meron silang public shaming na ginagawa. So, nasa isang parang bus sila, tapos meron silang sound system. Tapos, um, technically, pinapahiya nila, no? uh, 
call out culture kung baga no na uh, sa sila oy oy ka na nakaganyan hindi ka pwedeng tumawid diyan etc etc no um and then kapag meron silang mga nahuli ikukulong kanila doon sa bus tapos yung kulong uh, hindi siya ano siya transparent siya so may kita mo yung mga tao na nasa loob no so it it tells you actually that they're operating on a particular system of 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 uh, knowledge na nagsasabi na it's that situational trigger na ipahiya mo sila that will lead to correct behavior. Um, just to, I'll, I'll just end with this one, okay? Bakit adaptive to have cultural matching? No? So, sabi ko na, medyo tricky, medyo tricky tong usapin ng cultural matching kasi hindi lahat ng aspekto, hindi lahat ng belief systems, I think uh, na, naman, we can, we can say this confidently that hindi lahat ng belief systems natin that are indigenous or hindi lahat ng belief systems natin in the Philippines are something that we want to kind of match with. You know? Like, halimbawa, yung paternalistic sense of care which I think has undertones of sexism uh, underneath it. Um, that's not something that I want to culturally match with, you know? Tare, di ba? Parang Tinder lang. But having said that, ito yung arguments nila Miyamoto based on evidence on why it's very important to culturally match. So yung isa, so as it turns out, if there is high cultural matching, you feel like um, you're able to do what you want, you know? When in fact, it's really, you're able to freely do what your groups want you to do. So pag mataas kasi yung matching ng gusto ng grupong kinabibilangan mo, sa gusto mo, um, you feel agentic. Hindi ka napipilitan, in short, na gawin yung mga bagay-bagay. So dahil hindi ka napipilitan na gawin yung mga bagay-bagay or you achieve yung mga bagay-bagay, there's optimal functioning there. Relatedly, there's less effort ex- expended. No, walang stress sa, sa buhay masyado kasi um, parang automatic na sa'yo. Susundin mo yung gusto nila, natanggap mo na siya. So yung decision making mo, hindi ka conflicted. Classic conflict. Uh, ng mara- as a program advisor no, ng mga kabataan, mag-med school ba ako o hindi? Gagawin ko ba, ipapursue ko ba yung course na gusto ko o yung course na mga magulang ko? No? So there's effort expended. So there's lower well-being there. No? And then you also learn some tools and strategies. And these tools or strategies are probably not explicitly learned, no? but it's there. It's, 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 it's a knowledge system that, that we eventually uh, learn that can help buffer harmful effects of mismatch or amplify beneficial effects of, of cultural match. So yung, yung classic example na binigay dito dun sa text ay yung dialectical thinking. Nga, no? Now, if we learn dialectical thinking, then um, it's easier to buffer against suffering, for instance, or it's easier to buffer against the negative effects of like, hindi mo susundin yung gusto ng magulang mo. Parang you can live, di ba yung dialectical thing? You can live with a contradiction na may gusto ka, ayaw na magulang mo, pero gagawin mo pa din. Okay? And then finally, yung nabanggit nga kanina about higher social approval. No? If you match with your group, then you will be rewarded for it. And then of course, that leads to a higher well-being. Okay? Sige. So time's up na ako. So um, just to sum- summarize, no? in sum, um, that yung existing cultural frameworks nga na binabanggit nila Miyamoto, so nag-identify sila nung dalawa, yung independent, uh, individualist versus interpersonal views, tsaka yung dialectical versus non-dialectical thinking, ito yung existing cultural frameworks na. So ginamit nila yan to explain why there are differences in meaning and manifestations of optimal functioning. So that's one way of attacking mental uh, health and well-being studies na mas cultural yung approach. And then second, kakabanggit ko lang, yung cultural matching provides a roadmap. Sabi natin, culture is a roadmap on how to live. So yung idea ng cultural ma- ma- matching provides a roadmap on how to attain optimal functioning. So, uh, if you want to engage culture in our research, yung isa, we can start with meanings of well-being and health, indigenous local meanings, including possible organizing beliefs, and then we can explore positive and negative consequences of cultural mismatch. No? Um, and then finally, we can formulate or study models that may be the basis of interventions that are effective in our context. Um, yeah, and that's that.